Tim Wesselman, Senior Director of Hyperscale Partner Strategy. Uh, Mark Shuttleworth, uh, Canonical <coughs> Product Strategy and Ubuntu. And I'm uh, Jeff Hill, I'm the Server Segment Marketing Manager with ARM. John Masters, I run the ARM team within Red Hat. So you can see these gentlemen are serious, they've got better clothes on than I've got all of them, and even the scruffy ones, so that tells us something. Okay, uh, what I'm really hoping is that I ask one question and they talk a lot. Um, so I'll try with a very straightforward question. Uh, I'm good at that. Um, I, I may have trouble with the one on the end, so watch him. Okay, so why is now the time for ARM Enterprise? Would you like to start, Tim? Sure. Uh, tough, good, good, great question. Why is now the time? I'd say that uh, there's a number of factors that are lining up that make now the right time for ARM in the enterprise. It starts with technology. We've got obviously new cores coming, a new capability that's going to push the technology upward. That's going to certainly help on other factors outside of just technology enablement. We have market trends that are driving in the need for performance per watt and lower power in the data center. Everything's coming back to power and reducing cooling costs. At the same time, we have economic factors that are really important. Um, from an economic standpoint, we've got 70% of the profit pool being held by two large companies in traditional IT. There's an opportunity to turn that around and bring more of that profit pool back to you, back to the OEMs that are working hard on adding value. And probably more importantly, I'd say that there's an opportunity to deliver value with solutions and technology more closely coupled together at the silicon. Uh, as we do in mobility, uh, that we don't see happening in enterprise as much today. So there's an opportunity to really transform the industry at multiple levels. So that's why I think now's the time. Okay. You can duck and check, but yeah, I was going to say, just to expand, uh, expand on what Tim said there, there's clearly demand from uh, the market. I think it's looking for uh, new levels of energy efficiency and innovation, but there's also the prevalence of open source and um, there's new usage models that, that weren't there years ago. If you look at the hyperscale guys and some of the things they're doing, uh, some of the directions they're driving, um, they're innovating around software, hardware, really pushing the boundaries of, of you know, what we've seen historically. And to address some of that, new solutions are required. And that, that's what we're seeing. It's, it's this wonderful uh, inflection point. Happens to co uh, coincide with the time where ARM has interest in technology to bear. And I think to your point, Tim, there's, there's an unfair balance in the industry right now. So uh, it's a culmination of those things. Mark, John? Mark? Sure. Um, so I think the problems that people are trying to solve are changing. And the tools that they're using to solve those problems are different. Um, the really interesting problems in, in IT today are all about natural language processing and and, and machine learning. Mm. And those are really cool, really sexy problems. Um, the fact that you can effectively talk to Google comes from the amazing work that, that, that is happening from, from these new tools and the way they work. And the interesting thing about that is that they all, they, de they demand a, a totally different approach to the way you architect IT. Um, and the other interesting thing is that they're not just the domain of Google, but, but in fact, any business um, or any university can benefit from having this kind of this kind of scale out workload, this scale out data processing, analytics, and machine learning. Um, and so, I think that's the real driver. That, um, that there are now these really important workloads that lots of people want to run. They all run on open source, um, and uh, and they they they. Um, uh, they create the opportunity to bring completely different architectures to, to, to market and a real reason why one, one would want to. So uh, the thing with going last is you have to avoid saying all the things that have already been said. Um, so I think the, the first thing I want to say is that ARM in the enterprise is inevitable, right? There's an inevitability to it. Um, you look at where we're going with the technology, you look at the existing curve that we're seeing with um, uh, existing architectures uh, where you can you can only get so many more megahertz out of it and you know that that race is done um, I'm a big fan of the innovator dilemma as I know that uh, Tim is as well and you know this is the point of inflection in the industry um, but beyond that you know the way arm works where you have uh, system on chip and now server on chip and the customization the flexibility 
the designs are going to be a C around very high dense, uh, very high density, um, low energy computing systems. Um, it's a really, really, very exciting. So you know, why wouldn't we be doing this? I mean, this is just a very interesting, uh, very interesting ride. I think for the next few years, um, as our moves into enterprise computing. Okay, thank you. If I could add one other comment, cool. I'd add. There's another interesting trend that the work you're doing with mo enabling mobility is also changing the workloads and the requirements in the data center. So there's this fascinating trend that, you know, I think it's this year, mobility or mobile OSs now out, out ship uh, PC OS shipments. So now when you think about it, the demands, and, and of course the mobile phone today has changed dramatically from what it was years ago. So now in terms of the, the requirements to the points Mark was making about what we're expecting with speech recognition and processing on these devices, and the maps and all the interactive social uh, capability, that's putting demand on the data center. And the data, and loads on the data center that the data centers aren't set up to serve today. So the other amazing thing is you're enabling with mobility the wave for ARM to progress through enterprise. Sorry. Cool. Okay. Um, what do you think is going to be different, or actually what's going to be the same about ARM in enterprise? Any of you? I don't oh, know. Well, leaps forward. Let me, let me grab one. You're too quick. He, he, he possibly might rival me for, for microphone time today. Let's see. Uh, so, um, say the question again. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what's, what's the opportunity? What's the excitement here? Um, you know, the, the, the variety of, of options we're going to have here are just phenomenal, right? When it comes to. Uh, Different kinds of systems. Actually, can, can you repeat your question? I'm sorry. I just said no, no, that's not okay. What else? What will be different, yeah. or even the same, about ARM in enterprise? So some things will be some things will be the same, right? Um, you'll still boot your system. You'll still discover what devices you have. You'll still, you know, we were talking about this earlier on. You still have a lot of that kind of stuff going on. Um, there will be a lot of difference in the sense that you won't just have, you know, the PC platform or you know whatever um, that you're working against. Um, the Ability to have very very flexible SOC server on chip designs with um, lots of new and innovative um, pieces of hardware, very very large scale out systems, um, combined with the way that the ARM partnership and the ARM ecosystem works, where um, you know you've got this plethora of different options that keep coming, right? So you're not just it's not just one vendor or two vendors or ten vendors. It's you know, an arbitrary number of vendors, and by having that and leveraging the fact that you know everybody's trying to you know outdo the next guy, um, that's how we win. It's 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 an example of competition at its finest, right? So, yeah, you want? Yeah, I think I'll just kind of add to that. So, I think we're going to see an era of uh, specialization in order to get to those next levels of efficiency, and you know, if I'm a uh, a guy looking at servers and I think I've got a really innovative idea um, and I want to go off and innovate literally at the silicon and platform level, there's only really a couple of ways you can do that. Uh, and you know that's part of ARM's business model. We enable people to uh, develop specialized designs. So it's going to follow along the lines of what we saw in the cell phone market. You know, Tim kind of referred to that, the kinds of things we can do uh, in the handset today and the battery life that we enjoy is because it's a very specialized device and it, it's designed to do something very, very well. Um, historically or, or traditionally today, we typically have general purpose servers and, and they're very good uh, at a, a broad range of situations, but you know, they don't necessarily do uh, some of the hyperscale workloads or perform as well as they could. Um, and so we enable that. We're gonna get a bunch of people come into the market with various, uh, you know, levels of integration if you look at what Calzada has done and some of the stuff that Marvell's doing. Uh, it, it, it's kind of different. But to John's point earlier, he said, you know, we're going to boot these things and they're going to be the same. I think that's key. There are areas where we need to be the same uh, to reduce the barrier to adoption to these technologies. So, you know, gets into standardization, like standardization of the boot. Uh, things that Canonical have done with Maz and Juju to be able to uh, deploy these things at scale. And Mark, I'm sure you can elaborate on that. But John's can I, have got one, a point. I want to add one other. Sorry, can, no, I, just, no, can, I, can I just add one other thing? I'm sorry, related to the hyperscale point. I think it's very important here that there's a, there's a completely different um, use model as well. So um, terms like, well, firstly, you got a lot of guys who work in traditional enterprise computing, and you say server on chip, right? 
what's that? You know, they look at they look at these graphs they get given, all these charts they get given, and you know, here's your here's your um, your 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 complex instruction set computer part sitting here. Um, here's a bunch of um, bridges and, and different, you know, this crazy complexity that's not on one chip, right? And, and that's changing even in, in the non-ARM space, but um, you, you, you're firstly you're trying to explain to people what you know, server on chip and system on chip is. And then once you've got beyond that, you say, well, if you have a, you know, a thousand of these or 10,000 of these in a box, maybe you should just treat them like pixels on a display. Right? Do you care if one of those fails? Do you need to send an engineer out to like swap out the whole system? No, leave it. Let it fail. Once a certain number failed, you care. Mm -hmm. But it's a very different use model as well. Sorry. Okay. okay. I think you should let Mark speak. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I guess I would just emphasize what what I think will be the same, and that is that um, open source will be the platform of innovation. Uh, apt get, juju deploy. These are amazing ways to consume tools and just get them done so that you can innovate. And throughout history, we've seen that innovation happens when you, when you have the right person in the right place presented with the right problem, and they just happen to have all the right tools. So what I think is fantastic about what happens here at Lenaro is that it's essentially taking away all of the friction and all of the differences, essentially, so that you can apt get software onto your phone, which one day might enable somebody to do something really incredible. Or Juju deploy software onto that pixel grid yeah. of tens of thousands of, of servers. And so focusing on, on, on essentially making all of the goodness of free software available everywhere, like oxygen, is really unlocking unlocking amazing innovation. And that's what I think is, is really cool about the whole thing. No, I'm not sure I want to give the mic back anywhere near. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank no. you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, I like the point that, that Mar made around sort of the, the software, the open software ecosystem, which, which is, effectively allows all of this software, like Oxygen, to be everywhere. I, I kind of think of open source as that collaborative model where you can reuse all the things as, as uh, in some ways mirroring the ARM business model which is all about producing IP and everyone adding and, and extending and using it in different ways. Um, okay, so I've heard uh, some of the, the sort of ARM mobile ecosystem uh, referred to as basically like a bunch of pirates. You know, these are very competitive guys, they're going out plundering the markets, they're bringing back their goods. They don't kind of care too much about the wreckage, you know, and we've spent a lot of time in the NAR and elsewhere in open source, kind of tidying things up. We talked earlier about the single kernel image. I didn't think I'd be stood here two years after we started going, hey, we'll just put the patches upstream and tidy up the bits and we're kind of done. Of course, that's amazing. But that had to happen because there was this chaos. So um, what do you think, you know, this, what do you think ARM and the enterprise means for the pirates of, uh, of the ARM ecosystem? So maybe, maybe I'll start us off. So I think the, uh, the first point is, as we are getting very close to embarking on this journey, we need to be very aware that this is, this is a very important battleground. The pirates here have not had a battle like this yet. And this is the battle of all battles that's about to stage. And especially when you look at the microprocessor market and you look at the profit and where it's generated across all microprocessor sales, it's a small part of the volume, it's where the profit's made. So there will be big, big battles played here. As a result, for those pirates that are in the bar having fun, having drinks, having a few brawls between each other, it's time to put down the knives, maybe put down the bottle. <laughs> And roll up your sleeves and start working together. We need collaboration like this uh, broadly right now to go tackle the big challenges. You've got to work together in a coordinated fashion, probably more so than we ever have, in order to get this enterprise market established appropriately to enable open source in this battle. And for that matter, that's of great interest to us to make sure that this enablement happens, the coordination happens, and uh, not only at the SOC level or the open source level, but that it even happens at the OEM level. And we're going to have to work together to build this market. So that's what I think is different. Cool. Uh, here, here. I don't think there's much more to say on that. Good job. Yeah, yeah.
Yeah, I, I quite like pirates. <laughs> so do I. I think I'd rather deal with the Klingons than with the Borg. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I think it's important to remember that the diversity that the SOC architecture or that the, the ARM ecosystem architecture has, has fostered is actually going to be the key story that gets told over the next couple of years. Um, and the, the, the trick is to figure out how to harness that diversity um, and, and not let the friction that's associated with it essentially slow down the pirate ships, the pirate fleet. Um, um, I think there's a critical recognition that the silicon manufacturers a realization that the silicon manufacturers have to get to. And that is that the world where the end user is choosing the software is totally different from the world where um, the device manufacturer chose all of the software. In, a, in, you know, in the phone world today, still, um, you know, the cycles have compressed, but you still essentially have a vendor that picks a chip that makes a custom version of, of the operating system and then ships that. Um, but the world that we're moving into increasingly essentially wants to let the end user get access to all the software. And that's the fundamental change that's happened. And you've got to recognize that. There are some things, Lenaro is probably the biggest thing that has to happen to, to, to make that change possible. Um, but the diversity and the energy and the creativity and the innovation of, of the silicon ecosystem that, that ARM fosters, combined with some of the standardization that Lenaro provides a forum for, is a very powerful combination. Cool. John, have you got yeah, I got yeah, that I've always got something to add, haven't I? Um, uh, so so I, I think the, the, the one thing we need to do here is, is also challenge our existing assumptions. So when we go into the enterprise space, I think Mark makes very good points here that you know, we, have, we, have, we have a need for standardization, we have a need for compatibility. We shouldn't suffocate the ability to have um, new and very innovative ways of doing things in, in the enterprise space with ARM. So what that means is, you know, do you need to have you know, 10 year compatibility in your, your operating system? Maybe not, but you do need to have some things. So we're gonna to have to try to figure out where's the balance there between the way that enterprise traditionally operates uh, in, 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 on other architectures with you know, um, 50 year compatibility if you're on certain architectures uh, people in this room have worked on. Um, but uh, uh, as part of that, we'll need to look at the, the one size fits all kernel solutions, trying to get that figured out, especially in the V8 time frame. We've got a lot of engineering, but now is not the time for the pirates to be getting the knives out and attacking each other. Now's the time for the, the pirates to, to work together to, uh, to, to, to build the foundation together. Well, I'm not going to ask a you know, dweeby technical question. But, um, I'm going to throw this open to the floor. Has anyone got a question they'd like to ask these august gentlemen? Ooh. Come on. Come on, you must have a question. Don't be shy. I'll ask wow. another boring one if you don't. I'll get them to ask each other questions. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> So right now, okay, I'll ask a question. Right now, if, it, if something needs to happen to help enable this, this arm in the enterprise, what's the first thing we should kind of do? You want up for a piece of engineering? I'm up for it. You go go. You go. Well, I think you started to touch on it uh, a second ago, and it, it, it's really a, around collaboration coming together right now. Um, we're new entrants into this market collectively. Uh, x86 is definitely the dominant player here. There's many, many, many years of engineering that have occurred. And this community has made great strides over the last couple of years, but you know, there's a lot of work still ahead. And the best way for us to do that at the current time is to be coordinated in that effort. And um, I've attended a handful of these events now, and UDS uh, as well. And I think you know, this forum, the way you guys operate together, the infrastructure that you've had, uh, you have, is the right vehicle to achieve a lot of that. So, uh, you know, I'm, we've already heard the question earlier, but uh, looking forward to seeing more and more enterprise consideration here uh, and, and work. John had a comment when he rushed the stage, I think it was earlier in the week, 
uh, and made a plea for you guys to uh, change the kernel configurations that you're running with and start turning on enterprise features and make sure that you're testing these things out. Yeah. Um, there's some fairly small steps like that, but there's some pretty big steps as well that, that really mean you know, standardization is key and consistency to the enterprise. There's a lot of cool stuff going on, but it's kind of got to be under the covers. It's got to be hidden from uh, IT admins and things that are going to get these servers. They need to look like city 6 servers do today. So a lot of that smarts needs to be hidden. Uh, lots of cool work to be done, but got to be done in a standard and seamless way. Yeah, I would say um, be bold, be confident This um, that you have done an enormous amount of work that is putting good companies in the position where they are, they have ARM servers, hyperscale ARM servers, locked and loaded. Yeah. And uh, I, I think it is important that, um, that this be a forum where standards are drawn out. But I think this is also a forum where you can, you can build your own confidence in what a great enterprise hyperscale operating system plus SOC story actually looks like. And I wouldn't be too, in too much of a hurry to suck up big chunks of the 1990s um, in, you know, whatever, whatever standard label comes with them. Um, I think you know, this is the sort of opportunity that you, know, you have the opportunity here to set a standard for, across an industry for all of the pirates. Um, a standard that really works for the silicon that you are, that you're pioneering. And, uh, and that's probably enough said. <laughs> I've got a just because no one said the word yet, let me let me say the, the quotable line here. I think Lenaro is the place where a lot of these problems need to get solved. So um, we should try to find ways. Um, Lenaro is Linux on ARM. Um, it's what Lenaro does. It's really good at it. Um, so as um, Linux on ARM goes into the enterprise, we need to find ways to, to work together in the context of Lenaro. Um, and uh, in events like this to, to achieve that. So, okay. Tim, you've got a mic there if you want. Actually, yeah. Dave, if I may, I'd actually like to ask a question of the audience. Go on. But by show of hands, I'm just curious, how many of you would like to be a part of making ARM in the Enterprise successful? Okay. There's a little guy in the back. <laughs> Sorry, no? Wonderful. Cool. That's great. I, Thank I, you. I'll, um, I'll, I'll maybe just start to put them out of their misery. So the, these guys are, you know, heavy meat. Yeah, I'm going I'm to take Paul's message, uh, question there. But you just have to recognize that they've been sucked in here. They knew kind of 10 minutes notice, whatever. At least one of them just got off a plane and looks better than I do after a week of this. So, uh, you know, they've done pretty well. That's good. So, Paul, quick question. So uh, there was an assertion in the previous round that uh, to succeed, we had to make ARM, uh, ARM servers identical to the experience the admin had for C6. And that, the surface that makes sense, except that Linux definitely didn't do that. I mean, I mean Linux did not look like the main Okay, Linux so it's the- It look like AX, it look like so RS, or like HPUX. We'll, we'll give you a virtual punch card reader, you'll feel you'll, 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 you'll so, so that. So that was a real one, damn it. <laughs> the, the observation from Paul is whilst there may be a plea to make, you know, arms, arms enterprise things look like other architecture enterprise things. Actually, you know, when Linux came into enterprise, it didn't look like anything like that before. And lots of things, lots of inflection points and new technology don't look the same. That's a really good point. Yeah, I think it comes back to uh, Mark's point. We shouldn't just slurp up a bunch of legacy baggage, number one. Um, the other thing is the class of customers that we're dealing with initially are kind of early adopters that can control a lot of their infrastructure. They have the resources to manually do whatever they want to do. Um, you know, the hyperscale guys, the Web 2.0 guys, social media, etc. But as we progress and we want to be able to serve more of the market, mm -hmm. uh, we get A15, we get to the V8 timeframe, we're going to broaden the spectrum of workloads that we can address. We're going to start getting, you know, regular sysadmins get this ARM server, uh, Stop to play with it, and, and at that point, I think there's certain things that just have to work kind of how they expect them to today, so that we, we reduce that barrier to entry. It, it appears that way. Functionally, it, uh, functionally, functionally it's correct. Different. That's that's the key. So, uh, hiding some of the smarts that go on under the cover, I think, is the key. But you're right; it, it doesn't have to be a carbon copy. 
you know, I, I've been working on the OM service stuff now for about two and a half years, and uh, uh, when I first joined OM, well, besides when I said ARM and server in the same sentence, people gave me a strange look. Um, now when I say ARM and server in the same sentence, they say, when can I get one? So that's a beautiful transition. Um, but, you know, I think it's, it, it's just important to help reduce that barrier to entry that we do some of that. And, and amongst this organization, you know, we, we can discuss that and find out where, uh, where those boundaries are. So, point, point taken. So I had a punch card reader on the way. Sure. Okay. We're going to get one. It's, it, okay. No, it's real. real it's done. Trust me. Next year. So first, just for the folks in the back of the room, I just thought I'd repeat. I think Paul here in the front was asking, do, do these new ARM servers need to look just like x86? So if you couldn't hear the question. And, and I think that there's a risk here in, in, the, in the question, in the implication. There's also a risk in something John has said. So, you know, I'll start a little a knife Only action. Only one. I'm going to start a little knife action on the table, or at the panel here. Um, we've said, sir, or you've heard us say that it, that it needs to be boring, is, are the words that John has used. And I think what I he's trying to say, <laughs> I, I think what he's trying to say is that these ARM servers need to be able to, to enter the fight. They need to be able to be, to be credible in coming into the market. So, but that doesn't mean that we need to eliminate the differentiation. We need to stifle your innovation. And, um, and I think to, to Paul's question, it doesn't mean we need to take all the baggage from 30 years and drop it on top of your ARM processors. Because at the end of the day, obviously the last thing we want to do is overburden that SOC with workload it doesn't need to run to deliver value to the customer. So we need to be smart. There is going to be a minimum set of things. You're seeing inconsistency from us in this answer because we know there's a challenge here. And the challenge is we're going we're gonna to rise to that occasion. We're going to define what it's going to take to be smart and enable these devices. We'll work with all of you in making that successful. And then we'll execute. But we can't go about this by trying to bring all the baggage and put it right back on. We've got to be smart about this now. Yeah, I'm going to let John have his last word. Yeah, let me just be clear on that, right? So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so if, we, if we may enterprise ARM servers, a carbon copy of what came before, many different architectures have, have existed over the years, um, then we will fail. We'll, we'll sell some systems, but we will fail to fully realize the opportunity that exists here. And I very, very much agree with Paul and others uh, around the opportunity that exists here. When I have you, uh, very tongue-in-cheek used the word boring, what I mean is you want people to feel comfortable. Now, however that's done, you want to make sure that you have technology solutions to existing use cases. Go ahead, Rusty, you want to add something there? So, you talked about Windows and ARM, right? Did you say that? <laughs> I didn't say that, right? <laughs> right, 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 so I'm sure there will be. Right. What? I mean, no. okay, so let's talk about it. Um, Windows and ARM, is that going to have an impact? Mark can take that one. <laughs> so, so I think it's going to be important to check the box of Windows and ARM, and I think Microsoft's going to make sure that that box gets checked. I don't think we should, I, I don't think that that should essentially set the agenda for what ARM in the enterprise is capable of, because it's a backward-looking checkbox, essentially. I think it's an important one. I think it's an important one for ARM to get. It's an important one for the SOCs. But I don't think it is actually really expressing the beauty, the, the, the awesomeness of what ARM in the enterprise really could mean. A different tack on this is to say that if you, right now, when you have a conversation and use the words ARM server, somebody imagines a server. Mm -hmm. A server today um, has a certain amount of housekeeping associated with it, which is perfectly reasonable for something that you're going to install you know, a couple of tens or a couple of hundreds of, yes. and keep for many years, right? If you made that same, and, and that system administrator, when you're having the conversation, will find comfort if you tell him, oh, it's just gonna be just like that server. If you told him that there was going to be 4,000 of them in a rack, yes. and he was gonna have 10 racks of them, yep. and there was only gonna be, you know, two extra bodies in the building, right? He would hate you if you told him that he would have to follow all of those same familiar processes and practices. Yes. So I think that's the mistake that we don't want to make, right? That compute, in, in its generic sense, in a hyperscale world, 
is fundamentally different to big iron or big servers, yeah. right? All those high, high profit margin servers today. Yes. And so we, we need to be really careful what, we, what assumptions we make about what people want. You know? yeah. They can tell us what they think they want, but we need to look at this as a totally different thing. And we need to say, okay, what is gonna make it amazing to be able to, to, to deploy software into thousands of nodes in a small business? Right? What's going to make that amazing? That's not necessarily going to be Windows on ARM. Right? Okay, I think that's a really good point to end on, actually. Okay. We've come to a good, good point. Um, so I'd like to thank them very much for coming up here and exposing themselves, as it were, to you as an audience with these questions. <laughs>